So just for the for the fun of it, since you mentioned, let's go there briefly about autonomous vehicles. So one of the companies in the space, Tesla, is wor- with Andre Karpathy and Elon Musk are working on a system called Autopilot, which is primarily a vision-based system with eight cameras and a, basically a single neural network, a multitask neural network. They, ca- they call it HydroNet, mul- multiple heads. So it does multiple tasks, but is forming the same representation at the core. Do you think driving can be converted in this way to a purely a vision problem and then solved with, a new, with learning? Or even more specifically, in the current approach, what do you think about what Tesla Autopilot team is doing? So the way I think about it is that there are certainly subset, subsets of the visual-based driving problem which are quite solvable. So for example, driving in freeway conditions is uh, quite a solvable problem. I think uh, there were demonstrations of that going back to the 1980s by uh, someone called Ernst Dickmans in uh, Munich. Uh, In the 90s, there were approaches from uh, Carnegie Mellon, there were approaches from our team at Berkeley. In the 2000s, there were approaches from Stanford and so on. So autonomous driving in certain settings is very doable. The challenge is to have an autopilot work under all kinds of driving conditions. At that point, it's not just a question of uh, vision or perception, but really also of control and dealing with all the edge cases. So where do you think most of the difficult cases, to me, even the highway driving is an open problem because uh, it applies the same 50, 90, 95, 99 rule where the first step the fallacy of the first step, I forget how you yeah. put it, uh, we fall victim to. I think even highway driving has a lot of elements because to solve autonomous driving, you have to completely relinquish the the fat help of a human being. You're always in control. Mm-hmm. So that you really going to feel the edge cases. So I, I, I think even highway driving is really difficult. But in terms of the general driving task, do you think vision is the fundamental problem or is it also your action, the the interaction with the environment, the ability to, uh, and then like the middle ground, I don't know if you put that under vision, which is trying to predict the behavior of others, which is a little bit in the world of understanding the scene, mm-hmm. but it's also trying to form a model of the actors in the scene and predict their behavior. Yeah, I, I include that in vision because to me, perception blends into cognition and building predictive models of other agents in the world, which could be other agents, could be people, other agents could be other cars, that is part of the task of perception. Because uh, perception always has to uh, not tell us what is now, but what will happen. Because what's now is boring, it's done, it's over with. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. We care about the future because we act in the future. And we care about the past, in as much as it informs what's going to happen yeah. in the future, yeah. uh, so I think we have to build predictive models of of uh, of behaviors of people, and and those can get quite uh, complicated. So uh, uh, I mean, uh, I I've seen examples of this in uh, actually, I mean, I own a Tesla, and it has uh, various safety features built in. And uh, what I see are these examples where, let's say there is some uh, skateboarder. I mean, I, this, I, and I, I, I don't want to be too critical because obviously this is, these, are, these systems are always being improved and any specific criticism I have, maybe the system six months from now will not have that, that, uh, that particular failure mode. So uh, it, 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 it had a, it, it it had the wrong response and it's because it couldn't predict what what this skateboarder was going to do, okay? And because it really required that higher level cognitive understanding of what skateboarders typically do as opposed to a normal pedestrian. So what might have been the correct behavior for a pedestrian, a typical behavior for a pedestrian was not the typical behavior for a skateboarder, right? Yeah. And uh, 
so so therefore to do a good job there you need to have enough data where you have pedestrians you also have skateboarders you've seen enough skateboarders to see what uh, what kinds of uh, patterns of behavior they have so yeah. they, it is it is in principle with enough data that problem could be solved but uh, I, i think our current uh, systems uh, computer vision systems they need far far more data than humans do uh, for learning those same capabilities so say that there is going to be a system that solves autonomous driving do you think it will look similar to what we have today but have a lot more data perhaps more compute but the fundamental architecture is involved like neural well in the case of tesla autopilot is neural networks do you think it will look similar in that regard and we'll just have more data that's a, a scientific hypothesis as to okay. which way is it going to go uh, i will tell you what i would bet on uh, so uh, and this is uh, my general philosophical position on how these uh, learning systems have been uh, what we have found currently very effective in computer vision uh, with in in the deep learning paradigm is sort of tabular rasa learning and tabular rasa learning in a supervised way with lots and lots of what's examples. tabular rasa learning tabular rasa in the sense that blank slate we just have the system which is given a series of experiences in this setting and then it learns there now if let's think about human driving it is not tabular rasa learning so at the age of 16 in high school uh, a teenager goes into uh, goes into driver ed class right and now at that point they learn but at the age of 16 they are already visual geniuses because from 0 to 16 they have built a certain repertoire of vision in fact most of it has probably been achieved by age 2 right in the, in this period of age up to age 2 they know that the world is three dimensional they know how objects look like from different perspectives they know about occlusion they know about common dynamics of humans and other bodies they have some notion of intuitive physics so they they have built that up from their observations and interactions in early childhood and of course reinforced through they they're growing up to age 16 so then at age 16 when they go into driver ed what are they learning they are not learning afresh the visual world they have a mastery of the visual world what they are learning is control okay they are learning how to be smooth about control about steering and brakes right. and so forth they're learning a sense of typical traffic situations now the the that education process can be quite short because they are coming in as visual geniuses and of course in their future they're going to encounter situations which are very novel right, right. so during my driver ed class that i may not have had to deal with a skateboarder i may not have had to deal with a truck driving in front of me who's from who's uh, where the back opens up and some junk gets dropped from the truck mm-hmm. and i have to deal with it right but i can deal with this as a driver even though i did not encounter this in my driver ed class and the reason i can deal with it is because i have all this general visual knowledge and expertise and uh do you think the learning mechanisms we have today can do that kind of long term accumulation of knowledge or do we have to uh, do some kind of you know in the, the the work that led up to expert systems with knowledge representation you know the broader field of what of artificial intelligence uh, worked on this kind of accumulation of knowledge do you think neural networks can do the same i think uh i don't see any in principle problem with neural networks doing it but i think the learning techniques would need to evolve significantly so the current uh, the current uh, learning techniques that we have yeah, is are supervised learning you're giving lots of examples x i y i pairs and you you learn the functional mapping between them i think that human learning is far richer than that it includes many different components there are there is uh, a child explores the world 
and sees us for example a, a child takes an object and manipulates it in uh, his or her hand and therefore gets to see the object from different points of view and the child has commanded the movement so that's a kind of learning data but the learning data has been arranged by the child and this is a very rich kind of data the child can do various experiments with the world so uh so there are many aspects of a sort of human learning and these have been studied in in child development by psychologists and they what they tell us is that supervised learning is a very small part of it there are many different aspects of learning and what we would need to do is to develop models of all of these and then uh train our systems in that with that kind of uh uh protocol so new new methods of learning that yes. some of which might imitate the human brain 